to bring it back against my chest, but, but I could take pictures of the, the fireball behind us. Uh, very, you very you were taking pictures. What's the view like as you start entering the atmosphere and coming in for your landing? Uh, well, in our spacecraft capsules, uh, <laughs> the heat shield, fortunately, was coming in first, so we were looking in the other direction, sort of up, and uh, there's nothing to see except uh, stars, but you couldn't see stars because we always most always made our uh, entry uh, initial entry during daylight so we could assure ourselves that we were uh, oriented properly or, the, or that the computer didn't have a uh, 180 degree mix uh, you don't want to come in uh, uh, pointy end first uh, we call it yeah that want. would be bad what uh, yeah. what does it feel like when you hit the water well now, now that's that's a sudden one and uh and in our case uh uh i was sitting on the left side and um uh, Mike Collins was on the left and, and Neil Armstrong was, uh, was in the center because uh, Mike uh, was in control of the re-entry and my hand was down on some circuit breakers to uh, jettison the chutes. Mike had switches and I had circuit breakers. We hit so hard that my hand slid off the circuit breakers so when we touched down Mike threw the switches to jettison the parachutes but nothing happened until I got my fingers back on the circuit breakers and that's why we tipped over and floated upside down for about 10 minutes. Very inglorious position having just come back from the moon. But you landed safely and we're going to ask Buzz Aldrin to stay with us throughout the morning here on MSNBC. He'll also be part of MSNBC's live coverage which begins at 11.30 a.m. Eastern Time, 8.30 a.m. Pacific Time. What they would like to see and so that shuttle may stay up for another orbit. I'm joined by uh, Jim Lovell, our special correspondent for our coverage, and also Winston Scott, current NASA astronaut. Winston, in either of your shuttle flights, have you had your stay extended by weather? No, John, as a matter of fact, we haven't had the good fortune of being extended <laughs> by weather. <laughs> as Jim can tell you, whenever you're on orbit, uh, you do anything to extend another day or another couple of days, but uh, both my flights came home on time. Well, Jim spent two weeks on board Apollo uh, 8. Uh, uh, that was Gemini, Gemini, I'm sorry, Gemini, Gemini 7. 7 yeah. Two weeks orbiting the Earth, and you say it got a little, little, uh, little cramped. Winston, that wasn't the case on Gemini 7. <laughs> I mean, uh, we were happy to come down after two weeks of that spacecraft. I can imagine. We're going we're gonna to listen in to what NASA is saying now to the astronauts. This is NASA Select Audio, it's known. They are polling the flight directors to get their read as to whether or not it is a good time to bring this shuttle down on its 134th orbit. Juliet Huddy is at the uh, runway site, just uh, uh, a couple of miles from here. Juliet, uh, can you tell us what that windsock is doing now? Yeah, you can look behind me. It's, it's not too bad. There, we get gust time and time again. It is a go. Actually, we just heard it is a go. You can hear people clapping right now. John, back to you. All right, a, a, a go for deorbit burn. So that's, I guess, something of a surprise, Winston. Well, it sure is, based on what we heard just a few minutes ago. But apparently, uh, everything looks good. We're going to bring them home. All right, so we have, this, we have this little model of discovery. Winston, if you'd be good enough to pick that up. Sure. And tell us exactly, uh, well, in what configuration are they orbiting right now? Okay, right now, they are probably orbiting in this configuration. They're probably going in this direction. If now, you, for deorbit burn... If, if you were on Earth, they would be considered upside down. They'd That's be considered how they spend most down. of their time flying. That's right. Now, what they'll do to slow the vehicle down, and as you know, they've got to slow it down so that gravity will bring it home, they'll actually turn it around backwards and fire the engines to slow it down. Kind of cool. And then they'll pull like this to this attitude and actually come in in this direction of the way a real airplane comes in. Now, but it's a very high angle of attack. Very high angle of attack. They're about 40 degrees angle of attack. And for those who fly airplanes, you know yeah, that's, that's extremely right. high. And so they're actually using the reaction controls to control because the aerodynamic situation in the beginning is not, uh, e not good. Exactly. You're still in space. You don't have much airflow, and you're using the reaction control system jet to control the orbiter. It's got to be a, a pretty delicate dance for the commander and the pilot when they're up there, not only, you know, <laughs> turning that thing around and firing those retro rockets, because as we've noted, once you start that deorbit burn, you're coming down. You are coming down, no doubt about it. And it is a delicate dance, but what makes it so uh, uh, neat, or what makes it uh, relatively easy to do, is the computers. And the folks that have designed and written those computer programs and designed the flight control system, the reaction control system, and so on. 
Without the computers and all the, the folks that uh, support this vehicle, a human being couldn't do it. Now, Winston, I just teed up a perfect opportunity for you to talk about your training and all of the magnificent work that you guys are able to do up there, and you lay it all on the computer. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, it, it's hard to put aside the amount of work you do with the amount of fun you have up there. We think of ourselves as, as having a good time and letting somebody else do all the work. But, uh, but you're, you're correct, it's, it's quite an involved process to bring the orbiter home, and, uh, and we train pretty hard for it. Well, let me ask you just one quick question. Uh, when does the commander take over? The final landing? Uh, at Mach 1, thereabouts. Yeah. All right. We are about an hour and 20 minutes away now from what is going to be the landing of the Space Shuttle Discovery. John Brent, Glenn, and crew we will be back with more coverage in just a moment. Stay with us. but uh, the flight controllers I feel confident that the shuttle will be just fine and uh, a shuttle simulator which has flown the approach at that landing facility several times this morning reports no problems whatsoever with the wind so just to recap 12.04 p.m. Eastern Time Space Shuttle D Discovery will return John Glenn's historic second flight into orbit will land and we of course will bring you live coverage beginning shortly before the noon hour join Walter Cronkite and myself for that Miles O'Brien CNN reporting live from the Kennedy Space Center. Now a break. And we have just learned in the last couple of minutes that indeed there is going to be a landing of Space Shuttle Discovery here at the Kennedy Space Center just about an hour and, oh, uh, 20 minutes or so from now. The deorbit burn that will initiate their descent is just about six minutes away, so things are happening fast and furious. We want to check in uh, with Washington, D.C. Brian, uh, excuse me, Steve Santani is joining us there at the S Smithsonian Institution. Steve? John, we're at the Air and Space Museum, part of the Smithsonian Institution's museums here in Washington, one of the biggest attractions in Washington, especially big attraction today on the day John Glenn comes back to Earth. Uh, people are gathering inside, watching on a big screen TV the coverage uh, as John Glenn comes back to end this historic mission, uh, his return to Earth after his second space flight. Now, of course, people come here to look at all kinds of things, all the landmarks, all the milestones in aviation and in space flight, everything from the Wright Brothers uh, flyer to the Spirit of St. Louis, where Charles Lindbergh crossed the Atlantic solo for the first time nonstop, and uh, all the way to, uh, of course, the space uh, flight, uh, the, the space capsule, including uh, the Apollo 11 and the Mercury 7 Friendship capsule that John Glenn first went into space on. Now, let's take a look at that, if we have a picture of that, because it's uh, kind of a stark contrast to what... Uh, what we're seeing today up in the shuttle of course there is a large crew of seven in the uh, friendship uh, seven capsule uh, john glenn was all by himself and uh, it's a very small spacecraft about the size of a phone booth kind of alarming and uh, kind of a contrast so uh, we've got uh, we've got people gathered here today people from illinois we've got a family from illinois uh, who came to see this, but people are coming from all across the country uh, to the Air and Space Museum here today to watch John Glenn uh, come back to Earth. Back to you, John. Exciting news everywhere. All right, Steve Santani in Washington, thanks very much. Well, Winston, we've been talking about the deorbit burn, and, and you were telling us uh, how it is executed. For the astronauts, do they actually feel anything? Do they feel a sensation when that's executed? Yes, you sure do. When the uh, Ohm's engines, or the Orbital Maneuvering Systems engines, fire, you can actually feel the deceleration on the body. And they'll fire for several minutes. I'm not sure the length of time for this particular burn, but you'll definitely feel it. Because you're flying at 17,000 plus miles an hour in that, orbit. That's correct. About 17,500 miles per hour in orbit. And the idea to come home, obviously, is to slow yourself down so that gravity will pull you back into the atmosphere and you come home. It's all up to Mother Earth at that point. What about the G-loading, Winston? Now, how much Gs does this crew feel uh, in, the, uh, in the orbiter? Actually, the G-loading is not that bad. It will gradually build up to about 4 Gs. But, uh, I'm sorry, it will gradually build up to about 2 Gs. But it feels like 4 Gs because you've been deconditioned for nine days. I know all about that. <laughs> we are going to listen in to Mission Control now. Alicia Acuna is there in Houston, where they're actually going to be running the show and giving the order for that deorbit burn in just a couple of minutes. Alicia? That's right, John. Here at Mission Control, they radioed up just a few minutes ago to Discovery, said the deorbit burn is a go. Right now, we're a few minutes away from the actual command. 
A little earlier, just actually about 15 minutes ago, Mission Control warned Discovery that the winds are picking up. They are going to go ahead and go for the deorbit burn, but the winds are picking up, and at about three to 400 feet from the landing strip, they could experience some light to moderate turbulence. Right now, the crosswinds are at 16 knots, which is acceptable. The maximum, we understand, is 20 knots, so it could be a little turbulent for the shuttle Discovery coming in, but right now, we're just awaiting that command. Once the deorbit burn happens, they will re-enter the Earth's atmosphere, gravity will take ho hold, and then they will glide on into Earth. Now, once they start, once they get into the Earth's atmosphere, there is no turning back. They don't have the option, if things seem a little too turbulent, like jetliners do, to circle the runway a couple of times and come back. Once they start, they have one opportunity okay. to land. So this okay. is a very tense situation we're watching very closely and, of course, hoping for the best. Reporting live at Mission Control, Alicia Cunha, Fox News. All right, Alicia, thanks very much. And let's listen in to what the voices of Mission Control in Houston are telling the crew of Discovery.